Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. I welcome you to another day of devotion. Today is Saturday, November 4th, 2023. The instrument of today's devotion remains the daily fountain of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. And the text is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, while the topic says, the perils of the last days. Let us pray. O Lord our God, thank you once again for the miracle of sleeping and waking into another day. Thank you for your mercies upon the sons of men. Thank you, O Lord, for the instrument of your word with which you sharpen us on daily basis, making our lives better and our journey on earth glorifying to you. Lord, we commend ourselves to you as we go into your word today. Grant us both inspiration and understanding. Illumine our hearts, O God. May the truth of your word stick in us. This is our prayer. Be thou exalted. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen and amen. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if he be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the previstry. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy property may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself, and them that hear thee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The topic, is, like I said before, is the perils of the last days. The Bible did not in any way 
leave us ignorant of the doctrinal corruption that we characterize the last days. The apostles of old warned and they were very express about it. In Acts of Apostles chapter 20 from 29 to 30, St. Paul warned the elders of the Ephesian church. St. Paul warned Timothy. St. Paul warned Titus about it. In 2 Peter chapter 2, Peter cautioned against it vehemently. In Jude, Jude also cautioned about it. He said, contend for the faith which was, done, which was first delivered unto thee. Why? Because he was feeling that some people will creep in with the wrong thing. And so, it's, what is happening in our time should not surprise us at all. Why? Because we were forewarned. In today's passage, we see St. Paul telling Timothy that the Holy Spirit is expressly speaking that in the end times as we are in right now, some people shall depart from the faith. You know what makes it serious? This time he's not saying some people will come in from outside. But that some people who had been with us, who had served God, who had known the terrain of faith, will depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirit. And that is what makes it dangerous. If we were to confront strangers, it would be easier. Why? They may not know everything around us. But if we are dealing with some of us who had been corrupted, who had departed from the faith, it will be very difficult because even the unsuspecting among us might fall for them. I remember I had a friend. We gave our lives to Christ almost at the same time. And by God's grace, in his mercy, we were growing. God was helping us. And each time we met, after our discussion, we parted with this cliche, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. And so after a time, I met him because we had left school. So I met him. And oh, we stayed, we chatted. After the banters, I stood up and I said, Maranatha. And he looked at me and said, um, I would want us to fix a time and look at some of these things that we had believed in the past. The thing hit me like a bullet because I knew that something had gone wrong. I sat down and he began to talk. By the time he finished, I discovered that he had been, he had been, he had, been, he had fallen prey to one of these sects that move around looking for whom to devour like a roaring lion. Until the last time I saw him, he was still with them. And of course, life has not been the same. The Bible says that these people will give heed to seducing spirits. You know, Angels of God are messengers of God. And they move around according to scriptures, helping the cause of God and as ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. So we have demons as messengers of the devil. All they do is promote everything that is anti-God. And once an individual gives them an opportunity in his or her life, they begin the work of seduction to evil in the life of such a person. And that's why the Bible says, don't even give the devil a foothold at all. And their works in the lives of such individuals most of the times leads to such individuals departing from the faith to apostasy. I give you an example 
of what happened in 1 Kings chapter 13. It's a story we know very well. A young prophet from Judah was given the word of the Lord to go and prophesy against the altar of Jeroboam and also to prophesy the birth of Josiah. And he went. But before he went, God had told him, don't eat anything there. Don't take anything there. Just prophesy and return. And once he finished, King Jeroboam wanted to take him home to refresh himself after all that happened. You know all that happened. He said, no. The Spirit of the Lord had told me, and I'm not going to eat anything. I'm not going to take anything from here. And he moved. While he was almost out of the city, the old prophet ran after him, went and told him that he had the Lord tell him to return and eat. And unfortunately, he listened to him. He, he was seduced. He was deceived. He listened to him. He returned and he ate. While the food was still with him, that same old prophet, prophet prophesied and said, Because you have gone against the word of the Lord, you will not be buried in the sepulchre of your fathers. When he was done and he was on his way going, a lion came out from the bush and devoured him and was beside, left his donkey and, was, and also sat beside his body. This old prophet made arrangement, went and brought his body and buried him there. Why? He was deceived. Why? He was seduced. And so what is St. Paul saying today? That the Spirit of the Lord is shouting expressly that in these our days, in these last days, some of us will depart from faith and give heed to seducing spirit and begin to deceive others. What should we do? Be very sensitive in spirit. To note them and run away from them. And the higher degree of this negative transition is that their consciences will now be seared as with a hot iron. And what does that mean? They can do anything. They can teach anything. They can live anyhow without having even their conscience prick them at all. In today's passage, St. Paul gave an example with people that thought against marriage and eating of meat. You know one thing about false teaching? Most false teachings, they have element of, the, or element of truth. But deep down, eh, is a cobra. That as soon as he gets you, he bites you to death. Deep down is something that is anti-God. Deep down inside it is evil. So these people began to say, they, you, know, no, you know, don't marry and all that. You know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, from verse 25 to 35, it appears as if the Bible commends celibacy, commends singleness. But even though it is so, Bible did not condemn marriage. Marriage is not in any way condemned. But the Bible says, God created them male and female and commanded them to multiply and replenish the earth. But what did they do? Probably they lashed onto that particular place and began to teach against marriage. Some others who had elevated animals, you know, to, a, to, the, to the place that animals do not belong, probably more like an animal worship began to teach that animals should not, meat should not be eaten, so that animal, those animals will not be killed. And so St. Paul was emphatic about it. And what did he say? He said, neither celibacy, nor abstaining from meat, leads any man to salvation, or stops any man from even being salvaged. But rather, the creations of God should be accepted with thanksgiving. And so, he strictly warned Timothy to refuse all manner of false teachings, which he described as fables, but rather continue to remind the church of sound 
word of God. And a closer look at our time now, we reveal to you that we are very close to the end. Look at the fight we have against the, the people that call themselves LGBTQ or something. Look at the fight. And it's becoming a major distraction to us as a church. This is exactly the reason why God destroyed Sodom. And that's why we use the word sodomy for that. But this is exactly what people are trying to promote. You know, on the ground of, you know, um, human rights, you know, your sexual inclination and all that and all that. But that is not it. That's absolutely wrong. In the beginning, he made them male and female. That's God's standard. But men are teaching the wrong thing now. And so many people are falling prey. Even those who have been with us. The second one is people, some people teach that Jesus is not the only way. That Jesus is one of the ways. There are so many ways to reach God. Anyone that is available to you. But that is wrong. In John chapter 14 verse 6, the Bible says that I am the way. That's Jesus talking. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. But this one say, no, he's not the only way. You can get to God through other ways. But that's not true. That's one of the perils of the last days. And St. Paul was telling Timothy, the Spirit of the Lord is saying expressly that these things will come. And so when he comes, don't be caught on our ways. They will look at legalism. You know, the Bible says, we are saved, not of works. It's by grace we are saved, not of works. Lest any man should boast. But some people are beginning to believe that it is the work of our hands that justifies us. That our justification is as a result of the things that we are doing. No, it's not true. When Jesus comes into the heart of a man and regenerates such a man, of course, good works will come out. Godly works will come out. But it's not those good works that justifies us. What justifies us is the grace we have in Christ by, by faith, believing on the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. That is what inputs the righteousness of Jesus upon us. Then we also look at people who believe that once you're saved, you're forever saved. I listened to one who told me, once the spirit, once you're delivered, once you have been washed by the blood of a lamb, your spirit is secured, your spirit is intact. Even if you, even if you decide to go into sin, it's your body that is sinning, your spirit is intact. That is absolutely wrong. It's wrong. That's not the teaching of the scripture. Like we read, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, he said, those that are alive and remain, those that remain in the Lord, those that remain in the way of the Lord, those that remain in the lifestyle of Jesus, they are the ones that will be saved. The Bible says, if a righteous man lives his righteousness and walks into sin and dies in his sin, he will be judged according to his sin. And if a sinner repents from his sin, Joined, goes in the way of Christ and dies in the way of Christ, he will be judged according to, you know, a, as, as a righteous person. So that teaching that once you're saved, you can do anything and you're saved is not true. But what did Paul tell Timothy? He says, take time to read, take time to study. Study. Be diligent. To show yourself approved unto God. A workman that didn't know to be ashamed. Be rightly dividing the word of the truth. If you don't know original. You will not be able to know fake. We live in a precarious era. 
we live in a in a precarious era. A lot of people have been deceived. And unfortunately, they have access to congregations. Unfortunately, they have access to resources. Unfortunately, they have access to pulpits and to microphones and they teach anything. What should they do? Test every spirit and be sure that the spirit speaking is the spirit of the Lord. And we must be like Berean Christians. St. Paul commended Berean Christians. Why? They would always go back and study to be sure that what is taught them is in tandem with the word of the Lord. These are the things we must do. Believe in God that he will save us from the menace of now. May the Lord help every one of us that even as we run our lives, even as we run the race of our lives, may we not be caught on our ways by men who have departed from us, who have been seduced by the enemy, who are peddling the wrong thing. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we praise your holy name. Praise waits for you in Zion, and unto you shall all the vows be paid. Unto you the answer prayers shall all the flesh gather. I commit myself, and I commit my brethren to you, O God. May none of us be swept away by the current of the perils of the now, by the current of evil doctrine, by the current of the seduction of the enemy. Is there any of us who is struggling under such influence right now? Lord, we pray for deliverance of such a one. Lord, we ask, O oh God, may our garments not be stained by the perils of the now, but may we remain pure and sound before you in the strength of the Holy Spirit. Be thou exalted, our Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen and amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.